Hello there and welcome to part 4 of 4 of this extended portrait painting demonstration. After this video is uploaded, you're going to have access to all of the footage involved in creating this portrait painting. That is, you'll have access to every single brushstroke from the very first to the very last one involved in this painting. And if you missed the previous videos, I'll leave a link in the description box down below so you can access them. All right, now that we're in a larger, or at least you're seeing the whole thing again, you can see how that angle and even some of this stuff is going to need work. So let's just go ahead and do that. And again, the eyes are going to be kind of like now the, the, you know, the areas that we work all around. Well, we judge all the areas now based off of that. So let's get, let's get, let's get, let's get half tone brush. Pretty long process, isn't it? But it's really enjoyable. And I apologize again. Uh, there's noise going on around me. So, you know, I'm just like preparing to go into battle. <laughs> just moving that over. And make this darker and move this over as well. And another thing, remember um, a while ago I was complaining about my phone? My phone going off when I was painting and I asked some of you if, you know, if the phone going off disturbs you the way it disturbs me. And um, thank you for uh, talking with me and, and responding. Yeah, my phone ringing does bother me and um, just getting off topic here. But um, what I did was I silenced the thing and then I put it in another room. Like it is quarantined, like the phone is away from me. So now looking at all of these shapes and portrait in particular, I think portrait does take a lot of focus. Sometimes it's very hard for me to explain exactly what I'm doing. And then that's what I'll, when I'll get into certain stories, like talk about little stories as I'm painting just so it's not too silent all the time and then I think probably we're gonna want a little bit of a cooler note cooler half tone I'm gonna fit that in right over here the side of superciliary push that shape in a little bit more. Now I think that again here I keep coming back to this area. You know how there's always one area in a painting that always gives me trouble. Usually with portraits it's the mandible. The mandible area that gives me trouble. What is it with you? What gives you uh, troubles? In particular, when you're painting a face. For me, it's definitely the mandible. Seems to be. So that can be a question of the day. What area, you know, I might have asked this already. Well, where, what area in the portrait do you struggle with the most? Do you struggle with eyes, nose, mouth? Um, don't say all of it. <laughs> Just say that you struggle with eyes, nose, mouth, ear. A little bit more warmth. And again, I'm going to have to revisit the uh, outside shape pretty darn soon because this Starting to bug me. So half tone brush. Gonna add a little bit of ultramarine blue. Facial hair in particular is kind of difficult to paint wet on wet. It would be easier perhaps if 
the paint had already dried, but you know, I think it'll be fine. Now all of this that we're doing right now is just to kind of move all of those structures over. And I think it's kind of helping with the likeness a little bit. Next thing we're gonna to have to revisit is the zygomatic region. Let's make it a little cooler. All right, something's up with the mouth, or sorry, the nose. Could be that the nose is now, I don't know if it's distorted or if it's getting long, um, but I do see a little more facial hair, so let's get some of these colors. A little bit more facial hair than I'm describing. Angles, this angle's over. It's a much softer edge over here. I'm just moving this over. Remember, we're seeing everything all at once, and I think that's what's really helping with this painting. A little bit of a lizard permanent. So this is the halftone brush that I had when we were working the smaller shapes of the eyes. I'm gonna clean off that brush. Lizard permanent. You know what, I need to get some uh, what should we call it? I have headphones on just to block out the noise of my environment, but it's not working. I think I need to get some, um, what are they called? Earplugs. A little darker over there. And over here. And then again, we're gonna to continue to push the uh, contrast. So let's add a little bit more ultramarine blue and sap green. Right into here. I really wonder how long this video is gonna be, <laughs> or these videos. I know I'm gonna to have to split them up into segments. Uh, yes, another question. Let me know if it's okay for me to upload longer videos, longer segments. Please, I really want to know if it's okay because that would actually uh, kind of help me out a little bit. You know, I could probably even, uh, you know, I might be able to actually get more paintings done for you. Instead of having to worry about, you know, splitting the videos up into segments, like smaller segments that is. Maybe I can just start uploading the longer ones. Okay, so I did say that I was going to work into this area a little bit more. And I think essentially um, what it needs now is just a little more structure into this shape. But I think that um, that shoulder is starting to bother me because it's just too, uh, what you call it? It's just too. It was too short, you know. When in doubt, blur it out. I think it's okay if we just see like a little segment for where the shoulder is going to lie, and then you know the rest is kind of soft. I'm even gonna cover down towards the uh, the background because I think I'm gonna frame this one when I'm done with it. Let's just leave some of the brush marks to show over here, you know, just because. It's nice to leave a little vignette. Anyway, now I'm gonna to switch to a middle tone brush. Let's just test it out. Let's see what's on this brush. Is this okay? I think this is okay. So I'm gonna use this now, add a little bit of titanium white and mix right over here. 
So now we're going to start to build even more structure into this, this area. And again, I'm going to be pushing the light. So let's start off with something very light first. So titanium white and the cadmium green. Let's see, let's go for a very light touch first. There. So I think that I'm going to want to emphasize the lights and the cooler tones around the tear ducts. Just because Paul don't actually always point that out to me. Uh, you know that I took several classes, so many classes with Paul and Hamilton, so let's just go ahead and do what he would tell me to do. And put in more specificity around here with a little bit of a cooler touch. A little bit of a cooler flesh tone. You know, and while we have that, now I'm starting to see it right over there. So uh, let's see here. I'm going to get a darker brush. And we're going to start to sculpt out the side of the, the globella. So I'm going to use, let's see, sap green. You know I like mixing sap green and alizarin. So sap green and alizarin crimson permanent. And there, I'm just trying to get that shape. I think it's a little bit cooler, so let's use a little more of the cadmium green. A little bit more red. I'm gonna throw in a little bit of a darker tone here. Let's just take some of this darker red. Now we're really starting to get into structure, but we're still using larger brushes. And, uh, oh, you know how I moved that eye down? I forgot to put the pupil back and the uh, highlight. Whoops, so let's get this dark. Now you're back in close up, so we're gonna put the pupil back. Gonna have to clean off this brush. And just with our odorless mineral spirits, And I'm just cleaning it off just because I don't have another brush this small for the highlight. You know, we're going to have to put the highlight. And so let's put in the cadmium green, the titanium white. And we might have to thin it out a little bit. So we're going to thin it out with the uh, Neo McGill medium. And always remember, when you're working a la prima, that is wet on wet, uh, thinner paint tends to stick onto thicker paint. Hopefully that should be about it. So yeah, um, so I thinned it out with the Neo McGill medium just to get that highlight to stick. And remember, we're gonna be seeing everything all at once. So let's go ahead and just continue to uh, restructure those shapes. And just on a practical level, uh, we definitely wanted to nail the shapes for the eyes first, just because on a practical level, all of this stuff is much easier to move around. And I'm trying to keep a much larger brush stroke uh, per area, just so I don't spend too much time noodling around even though I'm kind of just doing that right now. But anyway, I'm gonna get another brush. We're gonna want a lighter, warmer middle tone. So I'm mixing right into this area of the palette. A little bit of flake white, cadmium red, alizarin permanent, a little bit more, sorry, a little bit more cadmium alizarin. Oh, gosh, cadmium alizarin. What is wrong with me today? <laughs> a little bit more alizarin crimson permanent. I think that's working out a little bit. So now, again, I'm, I'm a little concerned with the nose 
it could be that I have to push that shape up. And like I said, keep your shape simple and easy. Keep your shape simple and easy. I cannot stress that enough because with portrait, things are gonna move, okay? So on a portrait, you may think you have something placed down in the right spot, and then 10 minutes later, you come back and you're just like, who messed up my painting? Who touched my painting? And again, if I sound excited right now, it's just because I'm happy when I find some kind of mistake like that, that I can correct. You know, painting is just a, as much about making mistakes as it is uh, correcting them. What am I trying to say? The mistakes are just important as the successes in painting, as the successful moments. You know, the successful moments stand on the shoulders of the mistakes. What am I even saying? Let me just paint. So while I put this shape in, I can also look at the contour of this side. That's why I said, don't worry too much about the outline because we'll be able to just go right into that contour and push the light. So we're gonna use a little bit more of a yellowish color. So we're gonna go back to the cadmium yellow deep, titanium white. I wanna push the yellow into that even more cadmium yellow deep. And while we're doing this, we're focusing on the edge. Uh, that is the contour of the edge, but we're also raising the value at the same time. All right, so now let's see. Still, I still have some troubles with that nose. And I think what I need to do is get a smaller brush. So this one right here, add a little bit of alizarin, or sorry, um, alizarin crimson permanent, ivory black, neo McGill medium. Let's see here. Let's start to indicate the, uh, let's take some of the paint off. We don't want that much paint for this. So this is gonna be kind of like an ink line Just a simple little brush stroke for that. And I just realized something uh, that's not good. Um, so I'm, the microphone I'm using is clipped onto my shirt and I've been wearing my headphones. Oh man, that's not good. My headphones may have been rubbing across the microphone. See, this is why I need a film crew. Well, I'm gonna hopefully be able to salvage this video because I am kind of happy with the way the painting's turning out. But you know, that's just a, that's just life. Let me share some life experiences with you. You know, every time something amazing happens to me, there's always some kind of balance, like something negative always happens. Or whenever something negative happens to me, I tend to look for the positive. Some type of positive outcome will result in it. Now that's starting to make a little more sense. Of course, the shape is now off for that, but I think that putting in the uh, dark accents for the nostrils should help. Now let's switch back to the brushes we were using before. So let's see, uh, I need a halftone brush. I need to find a halftone brush. Well, I guess it's going to have to be the sclera, the sclera brush. So this one right here, I'm going to add a little bit of Neo McGilp and right into here. I want to have a kind of a warm half tone.
And now we're starting to finalize that edge of the bottom of the uh, bulb of the nose. It's a little more straight, a little more rectangular. And now I'm just gonna clean off that brush just because this is a really nice brush to get some really sharp accent marks. We're gonna use the flake white. You know how I like to use flake white right after cleaning off the brush just to get more paint on the brush? I'm gonna to try to get this accent over here. There we go. Simple little accent there. We're gonna put in some cadmium red. Just mix into all the colors that are on the palette. And again, we're gonna use this into this area as well. Now I think that I'm missing some more of the uh, the facial hair on the bottom. So right over here. Ultramarine blue. Some of this. A little bit of this, a little bit of this. Some of that. Let's make it even cooler with the cadmium green. All right, so let's go ahead and put in some more stuff here. Just so we have the uh, indications for the facial hair. Even more cadmium green. What is that? There's something there that's bothering me. I'm gonna clean off a brush. Don't know what this is, but it's like a little bump that I left over here. All right. Anyway, returning to what were we just doing? The facial hair, it's right over here. Wait, and with facial hair, I'm trying to use a little bit of a cooler color. A little bit of ivory black. Rarely do I say this, but I am trying to do uh, the best I possibly can with this painting. You know, like I shared the story with you already earlier. Um, this is my teacher, Paulden. So a little more pressure on me to do the best job I possibly can. No pressure, right? So we definitely want a little more of a dark shape underneath the chin. So a little bit more ivory black The ultramarine blue. And I think, I think I might want it to get a little cooler, or sorry, warmer. So I'm going to use a little bit of a lizard permanent, but. I mean, uh, Alizarin Crimson permanent, but not that much. And that should be, should be good, I think, for that shape. Now then, I'm gonna look at the rest of these shapes. I think that this could use some attention. I first have to figure out how I'm gonna do that. So I think that I should probably focus on this angle a little bit. So I'm gonna get the uh, background brush. So 
So let's see, ivory black. A lizard and permanent. A lizard and crimson permanent. I think there's a little more of an angle than I have. This goes in, down, over, I think. Then let's just use this line here. Super simple. So now I think that uh, perhaps this area here could have a little bit more specificity. So let's see if I can find my shadow brush. I don't think I can. All right, never mind. I'm going to just use. I'm going to use the background brush. I'm going to add a little bit of yellow ochre, cadmium red medium, and just that. So that on its own might be a little too light but it, for that area, but it might be perfect for here. So there is some ambient light in here. So a little bit of ambience there. And now we're going to just darken it with all of this and warm it as well. Make it warmer as well. I'm going to try to keep the rest of this shadow really flat. And you know, even over here, there's a little bit more of a darker shape that I perhaps wasn't seeing before. And again, the mandible is an area that almost always gives me trouble. So I'm going to keep these edges rather soft. Remember, when in doubt, blur it out. So I'm just going to make a conscious effort to keep the mandible a little bit softer. Now I'm going to switch to, let's see here. A smaller flesh tone brush. I think this was the lighter flesh tones, but whatever. We're going to have a little bit of an intermediate value here. That's a little bit warmer. I'm going to I'm going to have to kind of cross hatch the brush strokes. So let's get you on a close up. And this is what I mean. I'm going to have to literally hatch in these brush strokes to get a very specific edge. I think I'm going to let that carry all the way up here. And then while we're at it, I think we're going to soften that shape and then this shape over here. So that should cover this shape here for the most part. Now let's see if I can get a uh, clean, if I can clean off a smaller brush. And I just want to soften this little area here. There we go. I might as well just throw in some light while we're at it. You know, we can even throw in the light now for the lips. A little bit of a highlight there. And let's just get the uh, cadmium green into the mix. 
literally into the mix right into here and we want to put in these lights very carefully now so one light over there as long as it reads at a distance, I don't want to put too much nuance, too much detail. And that ought to do it. There's going to be a little bit of a bridgeway between the side plane of the nose and the maxilla region of the face. So we're going to try to add that specificity. And then while we're at it, we're going to put in some more information for the wing of the nose. I'm going to get a little bit of a darker value. Not too dark though. And then a lighter shape. And then I think I'm just going to connect this shape to that one just with a little light touch. Very simple. And I think I can still add a little more of a cooler green tone there. So let's clean off this brush. So again, just with the odorless mineral spirits. And so you know the drill. So titanium white right into this little area of the palette. With a little bit of the cadmium green. That seems to be the trend for me right now. A little bit of a lighter shape right there. Okay. And again, I really like the cadmium green just to sneak in some light. Don't need much. And I think there's still more light um, on the, uh, you know, the top plane of the uh, lower eyelid. So let's just get this same light and very carefully. First, I'm going to put a little more Neo McGill onto this brush. Very carefully now, I want to get a very exacting value. So I think about this value should be good. And right over here, very carefully now. I think I might need a little more medium. Paint's having trouble sticking. There we go. Just a little tiny touch of light for the tear duct. And over here. Just a little more light that we needed there for the uh, top plane of the tear duct. And while we have that, let's just go ahead and put in the highlight for the bulb of the nose. Should be right over there. And now back to the background brush. I think I'm showing a little bit too much of the neck. What was that? Okay, I'm gonna have to clean off this brush again. Just with the uh, odorless mineral spirits very quickly now. So with the burnt umber, ivory black. I think we're almost there. Almost there. 
So it might need to be a little bit warmer. So the uh, alizarin permanent. And while we're pushing this up, I guess we can put a little bit of uh, detail for the uh, shirt that he's wearing. Don't need much, but I guess a little, a little indication of some, some of the shirt, right? So push that up. Very simply, that's just a little shape for the collar. Don't want much more than that. Very careful not to put too much where I don't need. Put st I don't want to put stuff where it doesn't need to be, basically. Just a little shape for the collar. And maybe, just maybe, let's get a little light just to show it there. Kind of just making that up as we go, to be honest. When in doubt, blur it out. Just gonna keep it very soft. All right. Now, now that we have this brush, uh, let's go ahead and just get some of the flesh tone. And you might know where this is going. So some of the flesh tone, and we're gonna use that for the light areas of the hair. And there really aren't that many, so we're gonna be very cautious with how much light we use. And that's just because the hair is very dark. The background's very dark. So really, you don't even need much more than that. See how that is already starting to read? And there's a little more light uh, over here. It's very simply. A few little touches there. And let's just risk it. Let's just risk it. Another one. There barely anything, hardly anything. And I noticed that that's glaring, so let's use the fan brush just to illuminate some glare. Actually, let's use that all into here too. I think that might help, I'm not entirely sure. And then let's just soften again over here. Definitely don't want that to take too much attention. So now I just wanna get a, a little bit of a value for that because that's just too light. It's kind of sticking out. So let's just get the uh, cadmium red. Still needs to get darker, so let's get into some of these values. And while we're at it, I guess we're gonna add in some more shape for the ear. So a little bit more Neo McGilt Medium. A Lizard and Crimson Permanent. Right into here. Just a few brush strokes. You don't need too much for the ears. Unless, of course, you want to emphasize on the ears, and that's okay. A little bit more cadmium red. We want something really red, but not straight up cadmium red. So just something like this. Just want to get a nice, even mixture. Let's add some more of the dark into the mix. there. And let's see here. This lighter brush, even more Neo McGilp. Think about this value should be fine. Some little touches here. Gotta be very cautious, however, it's easy to overdo that area of the ear. A little bit darker. A 
And I think what I'm going to do now is just with my fan brush, I, it's a pretty beat up fan brush. Never mind, scratch that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean off another one of the synthetic brushes. So again, just with the odorless mineral spirits, kind of running out of room here with the paper towel. And I want to make sure that that brush is super clean. It has to be with almost zero mineral spirit. So this is the last edge right here that I want to soften. Very simple there. Very carefully though. I definitely don't want to lose the structure that I've been um, trying to develop here. And I guess, and I guess while we're at it, let's just use this now to um, soften this edge here around the mouth. Should be the very last brush strokes, however. And I guess, you know, I kind of want to leave some of these brush strokes though, uh, like right into here. I just like the way you can see just those simple chops, like simple brush strokes. And again, this all comes down to the, uh, the interpret and don't copy kind of mentality. Now, of course, some edges like this one, I will want to soften. But when it comes down to it, you know, we're not trying to create a perfect photographic rendition of the model. And uh, I think that that's one of the most important things is to, uh, you know, create visual poetry with your shapes, especially when you're, um, you know, you're creating a portrait painting of someone you know or anything like that. And again, don't let that bother you. It did kind of distract me a little bit. Of course, I didn't want to do like too terribly. Uh, with the portrait of Paulden, uh, as I mentioned several times already, Paulden is uh, one of my teachers. So that being said, I really wanted to create the best painting I possibly could. And I think that I, I really like the looseness around here. Notice how the mouth has like very few brush strokes yet from a distance. You know, it reads like the mouth and you know, a shape like that, it's not perfect, but you know, it looks, it, it has a, an aesthetic to it that I like. and by making the best portrait I possibly could, I definitely did not mean trying to make the most realistic. I, know I wanted it to be realistic, obviously, but not not worrying too much about making it super realistic, rather focusing on kind of the the, the visual poetry among uh, kind of among all these shapes, kind of like a symphony of brush strokes here, here, there, there. And especially right over there, just a single brush stroke that should read pretty well at a distance. That being said, I really hope that this video has helped you out. I wish you the best in all of your artwork. And as always, I will be back again very soon.